welcome to Team Tuesday. This week, we are making cross-stitch keychains. Here are the supplies that you'll need. In the bag from the library, there should be two pieces of wood, a key ring, and a jump ring to go with it, an embroidery needle, and some graph paper. Additionally, you will need embroidery thread and scissors, needle nose pliers for assembling the keychain, glue, and colored pencils or markers, preferably in the same colors as your embroidery thread, for making our pattern. I'm going to start by showing you how to do cross stitch. Then we'll draw a pattern, sew it, and assemble it. Let's get started. So let's look at the cross stitch blank. There are seven holes going this way and 15 holes going this way. Each cross in cross stitch is made up of four holes. One, two, three, and four, right? So each set of four will be one cross. So seven holes down, 15 over, means we'll have six crosses down and 14 over. So if you look here, imagine each one of these black spots is one hole on your cross stitch blank, okay? I've colored them in with the color of the thread that I'm gonna use for this part of my cross stitch pattern. So this top row here is all gonna be black thread. And then this row is going to alternate crosses between red and blue. How do we do this? Starting with your black thread on the top row, let's start with the first cross, which is going to be these four holes here. Starting from the back of the work, come out through the bottom left hole and cross to the top right hole. So you've got a slash to the right. We actually want to do that all the way across the row before we go back and cross them. So for that first cross, we've come across the front of the work and put the needle back down through this hole. So then down the back of the work, the thread is going to come out through this hole here. And we're going to cross over to the top right again. Then, with the needle and the thread on the back of the work, we're going to come out through this hole and cross to the top right hole for this cross. Down, come out through this hole and cross to the top right and go back down again. So we've reached the end of the row for this color. It's time to go back and do the opposite direction. So we've gone down through our work here. Now we're going to take the thread down the back of the work and come out the bottom right hand hole and cross to the top left hole. Then we'll go down through that hole and come out through the one directly beneath it. Cross over the top of the work to the top left hole. Then we'll go down again, cross the back of the work, come out this hole and cross over the top to the left, go down through this hole, out again through the hole beneath it, and cross to the top left, and go down again. So now we've made an entire row of crosses in one color of thread. It's a little complicated, but you know, that's pretty easy. What happens when you have different colors? Well, Start with the thread on the left-hand side of the work. So this cross we want red, and this cross we want red. So we're going to do it the same way we did the black one. Starting in the bottom left-hand corner of this cross, we're going to come out from the back and cross over the top of the work to the top right hole there. Then our next red square is here. So we actually want to come out through this hole. So on the back of the work, the thread is going to cross here and come out here so we can go across the front there. 
Now that's the last red cross on this row, so it's time to go back. Come down the back of the work, out through this hole, and cross over. And again, we're skipping this one for the blue, so we need to come out this hole. So we cross to the left again, and then come up to the left. So now we have two red crosses on the front of our work, and we're ready to do blue. So grab your blue thread, starting with the first blue cross we want to make, use the bottom left hand corner of that cross, come out from the back of the work and cross over to the top right. Then we're going to skip this one because it's red, we want to go here, which means we need to come out of this hole here. So your thread will cross down the back side of the work there, come out here, and in the top right corner there. Because this is the last cross of this color on this row, now we can go down, come out this hole, and cross to the top left. Skip this square, we want to come out here, so we go down to the left here, come out this hole, and cross to the top left, and go back down, and now we've got our row. Okay, so we're going to make that pattern happen on this cross stitch blank. Using the same idea, we're going to do one row of four crosses, all the same color, and then on the next row, we're going to alternate with a different color. So, coming from the back of the work, you're going to go down into the second hole and come up. Looking at those four holes, go down the one that would be in the top right and down. So we've got our first slash. Now come up through the hole directly beneath there, come out, and down again. So we've got our first two slashes in this direction. Let's see if I can make this focus a little better. So yeah, there you go. Now, so we're doing this for four crosses. So look down the back of the work, go down one hole, come out to the front. Go through the top right hole next to it and down again. Let's come out this hole, so we're going to go down through the next one and out and down through the top right again. So we now have four slashes, so that's half of a cross in each direction. Now it's time to go back. So come out through this hole, cross over to the top right, and go down. And again, go down one hole, and out, cross over to the top left, and down again. One more time, come up through there, Top right hole for that cross, go down. And then the last one, come up through the bottom left, and, or bottom right and down through the top left. We now have four crosses in the same color in a row. And if you look at the back of the work, it should just be straight lines because we're just we're going across in one direction and back in the other direction. There shouldn't be any X's on this row. Now, let's do the red, blue, red, blue row. So, again, starting with this first square, all right, which includes these two holes that were part of the top row. All right, so we're going to go this is going to be the first hole we're going to use. 
come up through that hole and down through the top right. Okay. Now we're going to skip here because that's going to be blue and we're actually going to come out through this hole here. So go through the back, up to the front, and down. So now you've got two slashes for our two red squares. And it's time to go back because this is the last red square or red cross on this line. So we need to go out through this hole so that we can cross back over the red. So if you look on the back, we'll go up and down. Yep. Thread got knotted. Up and down like so. Skip one, we need to come out through this hole here. So go down to the back, come up through that hole, and cross down the top left. And we've got our two red crosses on this row. And if you look at the back, you'll see that red X right there. That is where we've got our blue square on the front. Because if you remember, when we were looking at the pattern, when I was drawing it, we went up and then we crossed over on the back side, right? And came out again. So if you see the red dotted lines, that's where the thread goes in a cross on the back of the work behind the blue cross. So now thread the blue onto your needle. Okay. So I now have blue thread on my needle, and it's time to make my blue crosses, which are going to go here and here. So for my first blue cross, I need to come out through this hole right here that has some red thread in it. So from the back of the work, come up through that hole. Oops, don't pull it all the way through. No, no, no. And go down through the top right hole of that cross. Oh, my needle got stuck. Ugh. Because my thread's in a knot. Yeah. Okay. So cross to the right like so. Then our next cross is going to be here, so we need to come out through this hole which is the bottom of that red cross. So down the back of the work, come up through that hole and go down through the top right corner of that cross. And we've got to the end of this row with this color and it's time to go back and make our crosses. So come out through that bottom hole there and cross over to the top left of that cross. Pull your thread through. So you've got a full cross now, if it would focus. And for our next one, we need to come out through this hole and cross to this one. So go to the back of your work, Come up through that hole and down through the top right there. And now you've got four in a row the same color and one row alternating different colors. So now you can think about pattern for your specific cross stitch keychain. Now that you know how to do a simple cross stitch and how to use multiple colors in a row. Okay, time to draw a pattern. If we look at our blank again, remember there are seven holes going this way and 15 holes going this way. 
So if you look at the graph paper, let's imagine that everywhere one of the lines crosses is going to be a hole. So we need to go down 7 and across 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Back up and across. So remember, since each, each cross is made up of four holes, we should have six crosses going down. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. Six little squares for us to color in. So you can decide whether you want your keychain to be this way or this way or this way or this way, however you want your pattern to go. So put some colors in there and see if you like it. Of the three patterns that I've drawn here so far, I like this one the best, so I'm gonna draw I'm going to cross stitch some flowers on my keychain. As we're preparing to sew our cross stitch, it's important to note that cross stitch or embroidery thread is made up of six threads that are twisted together to form a single strand. When you're doing cross stitch like this, you can choose how thick you'd like the thread to be crossing on your pattern. Most of the time when I've done cross stitch on fabric, you're using maybe two or three threads from the embroidery string. Um, when I was testing it before, I noticed that it got a little bit tight when I was creating the, the last cross in each that pass through each hole with the full thread. So if you find yourself struggling with pushing the thread through, um, go ahead and split up your thread and choose to use maybe, maybe four pieces of the embroidery thread or even go as low as one. You'll see it changes the texture and the appearance of your cross stitch. So let's get started on our cross stitch. I'm going to start with the light blue in my pattern because there's so much of it. It'll make it super easy to fill in the detail pieces because the background's all done. So I'm going to hold mine this way and fill in the spaces. So across this top row, I have nothing but light blue. So that's going to be super easy. So there is my first row complete. Now on the next row, I have two blue crosses, and then I've got three purple, and then one more light blue. So let's do two, and then count three over, and then put in one. that last cross and there I've got all of my light blue and this is what it looks like on the back and I'm just gonna take this edge and I'm gonna weave it underneath those stitches there to hold it in place trim that off so there is the light blue completed now I'm gonna go for the two little yellow ones For this dark green, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to take the whole thing and turn it this way. So I have one row of dark green and then two single squares, as opposed to a whole bunch of single squares and only a couple of rows. It saves a little bit of thread, and it'll save me a little time too. So starting here, now this is one, two, third row down, one, two, three, four, fifth square. 
So one, two, third row down, one, two, three, four, fifth square. So I need to come out through this hole right there. Okay, so my last two rows are just orange. So let me go fill those in right now. And there's my last row. I'm gonna weave the thread through the back to secure it in place. And then I'm ready to finish. So now that I'm done, I want to try and put the two pieces of my keychain together. So that's gonna require making sure all the little threads are gonna be on the inside when I put this on the back. So just kind of pushing them around. And I stick that on and how does that look? There's nothing sticking out the sides. Lines up nicely. That looks pretty good. Okay. All right, so I'm ready to glue it. I'm gonna be using super glue. You don't have to use super glue. Just make sure that whatever glue you're using you don't use so much that it's visible um, between or in, in the holes when you push it together. Like if you're using hot glue, for example, don't use so much that it pushes back out through the holes in your cross stitch. All right, stuck. Okay, so for final assembly, you want to open up your jump ring so that it's wide enough to fit this way on your cross stitch piece. We're going to attach the chain to the jump ring, and then we're going to clamp it closed this way so that the opening of the jump ring is inside the hole. And that is the hardest part. And there you have your keychain. All right, I'm going to share with you a couple of things that I learned when I was making my keychain here. First off, in the places where you have four threads going together in one hole, like right here, for example, or any of the inside holes, it can be very difficult to get the needle and the thread through the hole for the last thread that goes in there. What I would suggest for your whole thing is to take the threads, because one cross stitch thread is actually made of six individual threads. I would take it and separate it so you're only using four at a time. The other option is to continue to use all six threads, but know that you're going to need to use your needle nose pliers to pull that needle out the last time it goes through a hole. Second, this was really hard to put on. What you could do instead is just take that key ring itself and put it through that hole. That would be so much easier. I had to use two pairs of needle nose pliers in order to get that jump ring through that hole. 